Kettlewell's first full game in charge today as official Motherwell manager. Kamarik away. We haven't beaten them this season, although we have taken the lead twice against them and we've thrown them away both games. So here's hoping that we can do that today and actually keep hold of it. Our last two games have shown that we can proper compete with the teams in the top six. It is a bit of a stretch to get to the, by the 33rd game of this season, but here's hoping that we can at least get a third win in a row. Here we are. Darvel's a bigger club than Kelly. <laughs> Prediction? Oh dear. Um, we'll go with, you know, last week was great. This is a typical game that we've come back and dropped points. But I think we've got a different mentality now. I predict a 2 1 win for the well. Don't quote me on that. four opportunities to get the ball away and we didn't and I think Kilmarnock deserves to be leading at this moment in time because we've been reacting to nothing I mean whenever we get the ball we're far too passive not really aggressive at all today I don't, I don't, I don't know what's up every time. should be getting treated off the park. That's a free kick, I know. This is the type of game we dropped points after two fantastic results, but I didn't expect it to come this true. Like we haven't laid a glove and Kelly all half. It's 
been utterly abysmal to watch. Just, just a wake up call really for what we actually are at the moment. And I mean, the, I mean, it was always a pipe dream trying to catch the top six, but with a performance like this, I mean, we're we're still stuck in a relegation battle. But honestly, if we play like this second half. <laughs> Things are just going to go back to normal. But it's a huge team talk for Stuart Kyle Wales' first official game in charge. Let's hope he nails on the head. Massive 45 minutes ahead. Come on, the well. Come on, Spouse. Keep pulling. Oh, what a save that was. Come oh. on. Go, on, Max. Oh. He's surely got to go to bar though. So 
I'm just back from the game. Uh, I think it was a game of two halves. As Stuart Kettlewell said in his post-match, I think uh, Kilmarnock came and went at us uh, in the first half and deservedly took the lead. Uh, and we sort of played into their hands for the whole of the first half and for some of the second half. The, the ball just kept... Like, I don't know what it was about Ash Taylor's Fordome, but every ball that went forward for us went straight to his head, planted on his skull, and he just headed it away every single time. And, like, I mean, if I was Kettlewell, well, obviously I have different uh, preferences to how I would manage a football team, uh, and I'm obviously not a professional, so, like, the way it got to in the second half, because we were playing so poorly, and in the first half we were awful. That was genuinely one of the worst first halves we've had in a while. Uh, I mean, everyone was slipping, sliding. Um, I don't want to say the artificial pitch was a nuisance, but it was a factor in why we were playing so bad, and you could just tell with how badly we were playing, because the boys just weren't adapted to the surface and then second half we come out we're a bit more strong on the ball and there's a, there's a bit more passion in the team Kettlewell's obviously like giving the lads a good speaking to when it got to the 60th minute I was starting to think right we need to take off one of our target men either Obika or Van Veen because going going long just wasn't working for us and Although Obika's good, strong, fast with the ball, um, we were just getting outnumbered up top because, like, genuinely, Kilmarnock are hammer throwers. And I'm saying that as a Motherwell fan. Like, Kilmarnock were trying to hatchet their way through the the game um, because on an Ashturf pitch, you don't need technically gifted footballers to get results. You just need athletes that can actually hold their own and you know, not be too stupid on the ball. And Kilmarnock were doing just that. They they were just shithousing their way through the game and uh, it, it was working for them. That's that's all I can say. But we brought on Slattery for Cornelius, which was a great substitution because like our whole midfield was shit throughout the whole match. Uh, Cornelius was unfortunately poor. Goss was poor, Spittle had his worst game in a couple of weeks and uh, that, that's not down to, it, it's just down to the fact that Kilmarnock were stronger in midfield than we were uh, and then finally, like after the last 20-25 minutes of us pressing, we finally uh, got our reward with the free kick goal, I mean we should have had a penalty about 20 seconds before the free kick was given and the fact that it wasn't it didn't go to VAR I'm, I mean I'm not going to complain too much but that's a piss take that was a stonewall penalty and the fact that the referee didn't even go to VAR that's just I, I, I couldn't believe that but nevertheless we scored from the resulting free kick so uh, get it right up you Alan Moore because uh, like, I mean, it, it felt like at times that we were against the referee as well. I mean, and Kilmarnock fans will be feeling the same, uh, I'm pretty sure. But anyway, all in all, a one each draw. Um, I think that suits us better, considering we were the worst team uh, over the 90 minutes. But I still think we did enough to get a point. Um, I'll happily take that. I'm not going to complain. Um, but yeah, anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, stay tuned for next week. We will be playing Ross County away. Another uh, basement battle. Uh, Ross County won 4-0 today against Dundee United. A fantastic result for them. Uh, I don't know what that leaves for Dundee United, though. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys, and take care.